Hey ladies, this is Mocha Mommy here bringing you another video and I've been trying to bring you guys a video for a while now and for some reason or another it just never happened but I'm really glad to be able to bring this video you, to you today as the topic of dark feminine energy is really gaining traction. Ladies, I think we talk about this in a very abstract form but what I'm going to do is talk about how I was able to recognize my dark feminine energy, energy and deploy it to my benefit. And then I'm gonna give you a couple of practical ways that you can do the same. The primary way that I've learned to harness and develop my dark feminine energy, honestly, has been through sports. People always tend to associate sports with the masculine and never realize that this is an incredible advantage for me First of all, most sports fans and participants are male. So the ratio will always favor me. I am always at the advantage in any sports bar and sports venue. Also, it's a way for me to strike up conversation that doesn't seem too thirsty and a way to invoke a man's sense of nostalgia. Always ways to deploy that use of dark feminine energy. And ladies, whatever is your talent, harness that to use to your advantage when it comes to deploying your dark feminine energy. So shortly after coming out of my Reserve Officers Training Corps program at Howard and Officer Candidate School, I was stationed at Fort Sam Houston to be assigned to Brook Army Medical Center as a graduate nurse. During orientation there, I meet a young sergeant. Okay, um, he's, I'm in my early 20s, he's in his early 30s. And we strike up a conversation and through learning about me, he talks about how much he has always loved and admired HBCU culture and that he had joined the military and enlisted because he wanted to attend an HBCU someday and how much he's a man of God and he had been praying for the Lord to bring him a help me and he was looking so forward to getting to know me and um, engaging with me during this orientation. And um, so basically what happened was I ended up in this situationship, right? Where it was this push pull situation where he would monopolize a lot of my time and energy, but yet would never call me or address me as his girlfriend. So we're out one night and I kind of confronted him about it. Like, are we dating? Are we not dating? Where's this going type of situation? Then he makes a very lascivious sexual advance. Now, I had already kind of put my criteria and my value system on the table long before I entered into this situationship. But somehow he's kind of holding that hostage, saying that we're not going to be in a relationship if you're not going to do X, Y, and Z. I immediately got up and left. Okay? I got up and left and I walked, ran away. Um, he started kind of following me, and so I kind of meandered my way into a really crowded sports bar for my own safety because I just was not feeling safe at that moment. And wouldn't you know, the I-10 rivalry was on TV in that sports bar. I looked up, and it was basically the Spurs versus the Rockets, okay? Um, so the, the sports bars were pretty packed that day because that was a very, very big rivalry back then. Um particularly around the player Hakeem Olajuwon, one of the uh, Houston Rockets, um, and David Robinson, um, one of the, the center for the San Antonio Spurs. So there was a big rivalry going on. And so I'm at this sports bar and I'm standing next to a guy who clearly was a Rockets fan. And um, I say to him, you know, Hakeem Olajuwon may be a Muslim, but he is the answer to a lot of Rocket fans' prayers. He laughed and he was like, yeah, you're right about that. We kind of go back and forth talking a little bit about basketball. And then he's like, so uh, what's your name? So I'm out here, I'm dressed up in this sports bar and I'm realizing something. I've got currency here. Why am I in this situation with this push pull where I can find men who are Christian, who are sports fans, and I have currency here. At that moment, that's when I realized my dark feminine energy 
had power. What I would do was I would come up with my top six criteria, the top six things that I wanted in a partner. Then I would make it a point to socialize with different, I don't know, campus ministries, professional organizations, running clubs, um, even just freestyling um, to just meet single available Christian men. I would book a date on the days that the Spurs were playing, on nights that the Spurs were playing, nights or days that Spurs were playing, okay? Then I would give that guy till halftime to impress me. I would work my six criteria into the conversation and I would give that guy till half time to impress me. I'm going to say that again. He had until half time to impress me because if he had not impressed me by half time or he did not meet my top six criteria, I'm hitting the sports bars and there again, I'm playing my advantage. Now, when I got out of that situation ship, I realized that I had an incredible advantage. The Army's medical command was kind of divided up into three parts at that time. Okay, there were those places that offered you a lot professionally, but not much socially. Places like Landstuhl in Germany or Tripler in Hawaii, where you had great opportunities for career advancement and educational advancement, but not as many opportunities socially because you're surrounded by a culture that's not your own and it can be difficult to navigate. Then you had the places where most of us were stationed, where we would spend most of our careers. If the army funds your education, you do have to pay them back in service. A lot of times those places where you have to pay them back are places like Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, Fort Riley, Kansas, Fort Hood, Texas, uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. These bases that are kind of in the middle of nowhere, not tons of professional development, but also not tons of social opportunities because they're at very remote locations. The two locations that offered you the most was Walter Reed in Washington, D.C. at that time and Brook Army Medical Center where I was stationed. A lot of your advanced practice doctors, physicians, pharmacists, physical and occupational therapists and nurses all have to rotate through Brook Army Medical Center at some point in their career, military career. So you're around a lot of young up and coming professionals and they're taking that opportunity and that advantage to go out and meet someone because they know a large part of their career is gonna be spent in a place like Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. They're really looking to lock down a partner before they go off to these remote bases and have a lot less opportunities. Not only was that happening on the Army base of Fort Sam Houston, it was also happening on Lackland Air Force Base, where they had an equivalent facility, Wilford Hall Medical Center at that time. So I've got Air Force and Army doctors and medical professionals that are now in my dating pool. I also had the advantage of San Antonio being a college town that had a very thriving graduate school community. There was also a large and growing energy industry where San Antonio was the closest metropolitan area. So a lot of time when those guys get paid, they would come into the city to socialize. And also being a woman of faith, there's a very large church culture, a large religious culture in San Antonio, Texas. I think it was like the 16th largest archdiocese in the nation at that time. So I had an opportunity to be a part of a lot of singles ministries where I also was at an advantage. And not to mention the San Antonio Spurs were good. So men with disposable income were pouring into the sports bars and the Alamo Dome to take advantage of that male-centered entertainment. I knew my advantage. The numbers were in my favor, similar to the way that they're in your favor when it comes to online dating, ladies. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there to work on your top six criteria. That's exactly what I did. Start vetting those criteria, start working those conversations, and start putting yourself out there. Now, how can you use my experience and this story to help you develop your dark feminine energy uh, so that you can deploy these tactics that I've used to be successful? Ladies, let me show you how. It's through Major League Baseball's postseason. Some of you are at a better advantage than others, so let me talk you through it. Ladies, this is the time now to start triangulating where the best sports bars that offer the best baseball viewing experience is going to be. The teams that are likely in contention for the playoffs are the Tampa Bay Devil Rays and Houston Astros. 
ladies, be very careful to vet those sports bars because you also have football teams in those areas and you may run into that fan base. Okay, so vet those bars carefully to find out if you're going to get a baseball viewing experience. Of course, the most definite team is going to be the Chicago White Sox. They're the number one team in the American League right now. And also the Oakland A's. They're a playoff contender. Um, I always suggest having a Jose Canseco throwback. That is a jersey that will generate conversation on the moon. My suggestion to you ladies is get a corresponding t-shirt to the opposite team than the team in your market is playing. It's always a good way to draw some positive attention to yourself, get a feminine version of that team's t-shirt or jersey of the opposite team that your team in market is playing and just use it to go out to the sports bars and vet to find out which is the best for you. The New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox are also in the running for the playoffs, but those are really difficult and challenging fan bases to navigate. So um, just be aware of that. I wouldn't really troll too many of those fans because they can be a little mean. But for those of you who are in Tampa Bay, Houston, and definitely Chicago, take advantage. Now, the National League, it's a little bit too close to call it, but it looks as if for the National League Central, the Milwaukee Brewers look like they have a very good playoff contentions, but for real, all the smoke, all the heat, all the eyes are going to be on the West. That's the Los Angeles Dodgers. That's the number one team in all of baseball right now, the San Francisco Giants, and probably one of the most hyped teams in all of baseball right now, the San Diego Padres. Ladies, start kind of figuring out which bars are going to be offering the best viewing experience for these types of matchups and what their opponent pl opponent players are going to be and start picking up some of the key talking points that are around these fan bases, okay? Now, ladies, you will not be an expert at navigating sports, sports bars by watching YouTube, okay? That is not what I am trying to tell you. There were times when I would read comments after I uh, did a baseball review or a baseball video, and I would get these comments saying like, I'm going to be a baseball expert. Okay, see, wrong. that's why you're wrong. Because the skill is not to navigate baseball. The skill is to navigate the fan base. That's why you got to find out which bars, which matchups, which times, which jerseys, which conversation initiation techniques. Okay? That is only experienced in real life. You can't do that on YouTube. I'm going to give you an example of real life versus YouTube. Okay? Um, Typically, when I'm the wing chick for some of my friends who are older, I'm talking like 35 and above, and we're at the sports bar and we're kind of looking around and surrounding the landscape uh, because we're, we have, there's a lot of Houston fans around where I am. I'm in, I'm in Texas. I always tell them to go for the throwback. So if you see a guy in a Nolan Ryan jersey, even if you're wearing the opposite team's jersey, go and start up a conversation like, oh my gosh, Nolan Ryan. I'm not the biggest Astros fan, but I have so much respect for him as a player. What's your favorite Nolan Ryan memory? Especially if the guy is older, um, you're going to invoke a sense of nostalgia. And he's going to really talk about maybe those times that he was at the Astro Dome as a kid or um, one of the games he may have watched with his family members or some of the times that he may have had a great time in Little League and how he maybe wanted to be like Nolan Ryan when he grew up. And you're invoking this incredible sense of nostalgia when you uh, address a man who's wearing a throwback jersey um, and was a fan of that player during that time. And it's men like to act like on YouTube, like they're all logical and not emotional, but invoking a man's sense of nostalgia is a very way good way to deploy your dark feminine energy to kind of get what you want out of that situation. Now, let's just say you go with this YouTube reality. Well, you know, you're over 35 and you hit the wall. Okay, let's just say, let's just say some little young thing in her Fashion Nova dress walks into the bar uh, around game seven, which it usually does happen. This does happen, okay? She's wearing her little Fashion Nova outfit. She's got her stuff hanging out. She's sitting at the bar. Now, that guy who's over 35 now has to compete with 
every single guy in that bar looking at that girl has to compete for her attention. He has to take the gray hair and his beard, his receding hairline and his little pot belly and go over there and compete for that girl's attention, knowing the advantage is in that girl's favor. And not to mention the fact that a lot of men who are mature, pretty much they're very repelled by women who have very obvious attention seeking behavior. That's like, I'm not really into, they're not really into that. They're really not into like obvious, overt, sexual attention seeking behavior. That's pretty much for younger and more immature men. More mature men appreciate um, common interests, good conversation, um, and a lot of times subtle ways of grabbing attention, i.e. the opposite uh, team's jersey is a good thing, but these really overt displays, that's not seen as attractive by more mature men. Just keep that in mind. Ladies, I am no baseball expert. And right here is the proof. When I made my first video about Major League Baseball, a subscriber had mentioned the San Francisco Giants. I had commented that the San Francisco Giants probably won't even finish above 500 this season. And those words came to bite me in the butt because now the San Francisco Giants is the number one team in all of baseball. What I'm trying to demonstrate to you is how by deploying dark feminine energy, learning my advantage, honing my skills and my interest, I got out of a slippery situationship with a guy who wasn't even on my level to being the wife of a high value man. This is Mocha Mommy, and I'll see you in the next video.